Hello everybody. So I just finished my video on uh, our Christmas uh, presents, which was really supposed to be just a little segue into this laundry video I was going to do, except then I realized actually it was pretty interesting to see what can you give each other when you're living in a motorhome where you're trying to keep, uh, you know, stuff and weight down to a minimum. Um, so I, I, I gave you a little insight to that. I think it was... I think it was probably worthwhile, right? But I did forget to show you what Kevin got me, uh, particularly for the COVID situation that we're all in. Hold on, let's see if I can stand this up here. All right, he got these for me, which you might think are beautiful earrings. Huh? They look pretty good with a ball gown <laughs> but no what they're for actually you put them on your key ring so I guess we have a his and hers matching set because there's two of them and they are used for <laughs> COVID times so you can use this to open and close doors you can use the little pointer to like, you know, if you get in an elevator, if you're courageous enough to get in an elevator during COVID, <laughs> you can use that to push the button for the elevator to come or what floor you want to go to. And I don't know, usually Kevin's the one who's really good at pushing my buttons. <laughs> so we'll see what I can do with this. Uh, and at the end, to me, it looks like maybe even a bottle opener. I don't know. But it's, a, it's some kind of a multi-tool thing for the times of COVID. I will figure out the different uses. Otherwise, like I said, I think it's, I think it's quite beautiful. <laughs> sort of free form, right? Though usually I, I don't wear gold. I usually just wear silver. So, okay. All right. But that's, uh, that, that goes back with um, Christmas presents. That was one that I forgot to show you. And you see, it's small and compact and very practical. So, um, all right, now let's see here. I just flipped the corner of my carpet. Hmm. All right, so the whole thing was Christmas presents, new set of flannel sheets. Of course, I always like to wash things first before wearing them or putting them on the bed. So I decided uh, that was a fine opportunity to tell you about laundry. Yes, you are probably living in a house or an apartment and uh, it, I keep tripping over my carpet. Hold on. Yes, if you have a carpet in your RV, <laughs> be aware of it. Don't trip over it. It's a, it's a decision you have to make because it does happen. I do trip, but I haven't fallen down, so that's good. All right, laundry. If you're living in a house or an apartment, then, you know, you hopefully have a washer dryer in your house. Uh, where we lived, it was downstairs in the shed sort of a thing. So we did have to go outside, but we lived on a tropical island. So it's not like I had to carry laundry through the snow or, you know, during hurricanes, I just didn't do laundry, right? <laughs> but otherwise, perfect, perfect weather. If it rained, you know, I put it off for a few hours. But anyway, you probably have laundry facilities in your house or you have you know your favorite laundromat right around the corner where you know the routines and or maybe you even just drop it off and somebody else does it for you especially if there's ironing involved you know I don't believe in ironing so <laughs> that was not an issue for me um, yeah like linen outfits just pretend you've already been wearing it for a while and that's why it's crinkled you know it's not your fault that you've been up since 3 a.m going to meetings and doing things <laughs> anyway um, so you have your laundry facilities in your own home or you have uh, your favorite laundromat around the corner or maybe you're going over to your mom and dad's place still and doing your laundry can't really do that when you're full-time on the road so what do we do um, first of all you might be relieved to know we don't go down to the river and beat our laundry on rocks and hang them on the bushes to dry. We considered that, 
um, you know, I've lived in uh, a variety of places, including Roatan, Honduras, and I have actually done laundry the old-fashioned way on a on a board, rubbing it, scrubbing it up and down, and that's hard. <laughs> so we're like, no, we're not doing that. We're gonna be very modern about this. So mostly, uh, depending where we're parked, where we're staying, you uh, have campgrounds, and by that I mean RV parks, certainly, but also a lot of like state parks or uh, county parks. They actually very often have a facility, usually in the same building as the, the bathrooms. And so, you know, they cost between like a dollar twenty-five and two fifty per load. Some machines are bigger than others. Um, so we usually try to try to take advantage of that. Or we have been visiting people, in which case one of the things people often offer when we're visiting is, hey, do you guys want to do some laundry? And you know, we we don't like imposing, we feel a little shy about that but at the same time they're offering and they they're offering from their heart you know understanding that that is the situation that our veers deal with um and so we we have been blessed to have family and friends invite us over for doing laundry and a fine you know excuse for some socializing of course and if uh if they don't have facilities where we're staying like often we're boondocking or um, staying in, you know, maybe more primitive campground sites so you don't have a lot of the facilities, then you do have to go and find a laundromat. Um, and you can find those, you know, you just go on Google and you put in laundromat near me and it'll pop up. And we do usually, <laughs> we research them a little bit. Uh, first of all, then we're normally also looking for Wi-Fi because while you're there keeping an eye on your laundry, it's a good opportunity to do a little stuff on the computer, especially if you are boondocking out in the middle of nowhere and have no signal. Then it's nice to know that you can get some Wi-Fi while your laundry is uh, doing its ting. Um, and we also kind of look just, you know, sometimes they're, like you see the pictures and they're just not, they don't look like you really want to hang out there long enough to do your laundry. So we do kind of check out <laughs> check out the different laundromats online. And um, some are very nice and clean and some are not so not so lovely. And but we've been to some that <laughs> one of them was like attached to a bar. In Illinois and we ended up like hanging out with the bartender who was also an avid traveler and we just swapped you know traveling stories and um, they had like uh, what do you call them um, like gambling machines so the, the laundry was actually a way that they were trying to pull people in to drink and and gamble, which we thought was very funny. We didn't fall for any of that, okay? We just strictly stuck to laundry and serious endeavors of, um, yeah, cleaning things and talking travel. Um, but yeah, they're all different and it kind of, it's kind of an interesting way to, to get a, a local experience as well. We've met some really interesting people and some, you know, had some great conversations with people. But I do still prefer, truthfully, to, to do it at campgrounds. I'm not a big fan of laundromats. Um, and especially now with COVID, like, I wouldn't want to be, I, I wouldn't want to be hanging out at laundromats. <laughs> so, I mean, if I have to, I will. And it is a good, it, it, it's, it's fine. It's still better than going down to the river and beating them on rocks. Um, <laughs> So anyway, you bring your own laundry, bring your own quarters already. And again, the prices vary uh, as low as like a dollar something. And then we were, we were in Maine and encountered the most expensive laundromat we had ever seen. And we had researched because they also usually tell you how much the loads cost online. So that's another thing you can put in your equation when you're deciding where to go. Well, this was the cheapest one that we could find, and it was 
eight dollars a load and we went because we had we had to do some laundry we went and then we walked in and the machine was like eight dollars and it was tiny and we were like no and I said to Kevin I'm like absolutely not I am I'm sorry but on principle <laughs> I cannot spend this kind of money to do my laundry and yeah so we, we went back to the RV with our bags of laundry and I guess we probably wore the same stuff for a while, maybe a little, you know, a little stinky, I don't know, but we were not spending $8 on one load of laundry. That's just the washer. That wasn't even including the dryer. So I, uh, all right, that's my background informative laundry um, video. That's what I'm doing here. Right. And I I think uh, maybe you want to come along and see how I actually do this. Yeah. I don't know. Is that of interest to you? <laughs> to really actually see it? Hmm. I don't want my videos to get long and boring, so I don't know. All right, what I'm going to do, uh, again, I'm going to close this one out and then I'll start a new one where we actually, you can come with me to do laundry today. How exciting, right? Let's go do laundry together in the next video. So that's it from Tanya with love. <laughs> Bye.